Hello everyone, so this lecture is not my own. I will be reading a short description of what deconstruction is from the portable literature, reading, reacting, and writing textbook. This is the ninth edition by Kersner and Mendel. This is their entry on deconstruction, so a little explanation of that. And then there's a short passage that follows that uh, applies the theory of deconstruction a literary term uh, from a literary perspective, applies that theory to Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man is Hard to Find. So, I did not write any of this. I am simply reading this. Deconstruction. Deconstruction is a literary movement that developed from structuralism. Deconstructionists argue that every text contains within it some ingredient undermining its purported system of meaning. In other words, the structure that seems to hold the text together is unstable because it depends on the conclusions of a particular ideology. For instance, the idea that women are inferior to men or that peasants are content with their lowly position in life. Conclusions that are not as natural as the text may pretend. The practice of finding the point at which the text falls apart because of these internal inconsistencies is called deconstruction. Deconstructive theorists share with formalists and structuralists a concern for the work itself rather than for biographical, historical, or ideological influences. Like formalists, deconstructionists focus on possibilities for multiple meanings within texts. However, while formalists seek to explain paradox by discovering tensions and ironies that can lead to unified readings, Deconstructionists insist on the primacy of multiple possibilities. They maintain that any given text is capable of yielding many divergent readings, all of which are equally valid, yet may in some way undermine and oppose one another. Like structuralists, deconstructionists see literary texts as part of larger systems of discourse. A key structuralist technique is identifying opposites in an attempt to show the structure of language used in a work. Having identified the opposites, the structuralists rest the case. Deconstructionists, however, go further. Jacques Derrida, a French philosopher, noticed that these oppositions do not simply reflect linguistic structures, but are the linguistic responses to the way people deal with their beliefs, their ideologies. For instance, if you believe strongly that, de that democracy is the best possible form of government, you tend to lump other forms of government into the category non-democracies. If a government is non-democratic, that, not its other distinguishing characteristic, that would be significant to you. This typical ideological response operates in all kinds of areas of belief, even ones we are not aware of. Deconstructionists contend that texts tend to give away their ideological biases by means of this opposition. Derrida called this distinction between A and not A, rather than between A and B, difference, a word he coined to suggest a, a, a concept re represented by the French verb differer, which has two meanings. Side note, pardon my awful French pronunciation. I cannot speak French. I cannot pronounce it properly. My apologies to anyone who speaks French and is having to suffer through hearing me try to pronounce it. I am very sorry. Um, I will continue. Note that in Derrida's new term, uh, an A is substituted for an E, a distinction that can be seen in writing, but not heard in speaking. When a deconstructionist uncovers difference through a careful examination of a text, he or she also finds an often unwitting ideological bias. Deconstructionists argue that the reader must transcend such ideological biases and must instead acknowledge contradictory possibilities as equally worthy of consideration. No one meaning can or should be designated as correct. Deconstruction, then, is not really a system of criticism, and in fact, deconstructionists resist being labeled as a school of criticism. Rather, deconstruction offers a way to take apart a literary text and thereby reveal its separate layers. Deconstructionists often focus on the metaphorical nature of language, claiming that all language is basically metaphoric because the sign we use to designate any given object or action stands apart from the object itself. In fact, 
deconstructionists believe that all writing is essentially literary and metaphorical because language, by its very nature, can only stand for what we call reality or truth. It cannot be reality or truth. A major contribution of deconstructive critics lies in their playful approach to language and to literary criticism. They refuse to accept as absolute any one way of reading poetry, fiction, or drama, and they guard against what they see as the fixed conclusions and arbitrary operating assumptions of many schools of criticism. So that's how Kirzner and Mendel explain deconstruction. And in this next passage, they apply it to Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man is Hard to Find. A deconstructionist reading of Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man is Hard to Find might challenge the essentially religious interpretations the author offered of her own stories and essays and letters. If you were applying deconstructionist criticism to the story, you might argue that the author's reading of the story is no more valid than anyone else's, and that the story can just as legitimately be read as an investigation of the functions of irony in language. Flannery O'Connor explained that the grotesque and violent aspects of her stories are intended to shock the reader into recognizing the inhospitable nature of the world, and thereby recognizing the universal human need for divine grace. The last sentence of A Good Man is Hard to Find is spoken by the misfit, who has just murdered a family of travelers. It's no real pleasure in life. However, the language of O'Connor's stories is extremely ironic, that is, her narrators and characters often say one thing but mean another. So it is possible that their statements are not empirically true, but are representations of a persona or elements of a story they have created using language. The grandmother, for example, lives almost entirely in fictions. Newspaper clippings, stories for the grandchildren, her belief that the misfit is a good man. In contrast, the misfit is more literal than the grandmother in his perception of reality. He knows, for example, whether the car turned over once or twice. But he, too, is posing, at first as the tough guy who rejects religious and societal norms by saying, it's nothing for you to do but enjoy the few minutes you got left the best way you can by killing somebody or burning down his house or doing some other meanness to him. No pleasure but meanness. Finally, he poses as the pessimist, or according to O'Connor's reading, the Christian, who claims, it's no real pleasure in life. The contradictions in the misfit's language make it impossible to tell which of these fa facades is real. For further reading on deconstruction, you could try Abrams' Rationality and the Imagination in Cultural History, or Jonathan Eric's The Yale Critics, Deconstruction in America, Art Berman's From the New Criticism to Deconstruction, Jonathan Kohler's On Deconstruction, Theory and Criticism After Structuralism, and Jefferson's Structuralism and Post-Structuralism, Barbara Johnson's The Critical Difference, Essays in the Contemporary Rhetoric of Reading, Vincent Leitch's Deconstructive Theory and Practice, Stephen Lynn's A Passage into Critical Theory, J. Hillis Miller's The Critic as Host, and finally Christopher Norris's Deconstruction Theory and Practice.